Hi, I'm Dale Kislik. September is the best time of the year, at least in my area, to gather lycopodium spores. And I'm gathering lycopodium spores because I like to uh, make explosive balls of fire. The best time to co collect uh, lycopodium spores is after the first frost, but you have to be quick because if you wait too long, it'll be too late. When I'm looking for lycopodium, I seek out the older mature forests. You're looking kind of for mossy, wet areas, low-lying areas with some moisture, or at the very least, some shady areas. Basically, you just hunt the forest floor looking for the plant. What makes Lycopodium unmistakably identifiable is its shape. It basically looks like a little pipe cleaner. Here is a little group of Lycopodiums. So I'm going to just pluck one off and bring it up close so we can have a look at that. You'll see them anywhere 5 to 15, sometimes 20 centimeters tall. Oops. And on the forest floor. <laughs> there we go. Cool. We're looking for the spores today because the spores contain an explosive powder. So this little itty bitty spore head right here, that's what we're after today. And they're getting close. I can see that it's nice and tightly wrapped still. It hasn't opened up and released the spores yet, so this is a good time to pick. Here we have an interesting little colony of Lycopodium plants or club moss plants. And you can see they're all kind of growing up here along this log and you, you know I, what I find usually is patches of them they grow in a large group and you take a few steps walk 10 or 15 meters in a big circle and you'll usually cover the whole size at least that I find on a regular basis and then you go beyond that perimeter and suddenly they disappear so you have to look for another patch here we have some of the spore heads but these ones right here where my fingers are these are older, uh, potentially last year. They're kind of brownish looking. And if we look in really close, we can see that they've actually opened up and released their spores already previously, I'm guessing last year. And if we look up here to the right, here we have this year's. And you can see they're much greener. I'll put them up against the other ones. So right there we have a nice fresh green one that's tightly wrapped versus the older brownish looking ones that are somewhat opened. One of the things we have to be careful of when we're collecting Lycopodium is you don't want to destroy future generations of the little colony. So you have to make sure when you pick these that you leave some behind. You don't want to totally decimate all the spore heads in one area where you diminish the ability for the plant to uh, spread and continue on flourishing. So I try to only take maybe a third to a half of the ones in an area. And if I come to a patch where there's just very few of the little spore heads available, and then I'll just travel to a different area and look for some in a better spot. You don't require harvesting the entire plant. There's no need to pull it up by its roots or even to take much of the pipe cleaner part of it. Instead, all you gotta do is just pop off the little spore head at the top, just like that. Pop it in your hand. 10, 12, 14, 16 little spore heads in this area. So I'm, I'm not gonna feel bad if I take probably six to eight of these and leave the rest, and then just move on to another little grouping of them. Some interesting facts about Lycopodium. It's widely used as a homeopathic remedy. Uh, I'm not a homeopath, and so I can't speak to that. Uh, some of the things that I do know that it's been used as in the past, the explosive flash powder is, is called flash powder because they use it in early flash photography. So if you remember the images from uh, 
maybe old movies, old westerns, uh, old television where the photographer would hide underneath a great big drape of fabric and then uh, they'd hold up a plate with lycopodium powder on it and they'd ignite it and it would go foof and let up a big vast flash and light the room so that they could take effective uh, well-lit photographs. It requires a lot of harvesting to get any amounts so you really got to spend some time out there picking these little heads and gathering quite a lot because the powder goes quick. Really the only reason that I pick it is because I like the powder and I like the uh, I guess the parlor tricks that uh, can be produced with the powder. It's just kind of one of those fun nature things that you can pull out and amaze people with. All I'm going to do is take these and I'm going to stick them in my pocket for now and when I get back to uh, my vehicle I'll put them in a container. If you sit, leave them in your pocket too long they may open up and fill your pocket with the lycopodium dust. Now here's the lycopodium that I just picked and you can see that the spore head there in my hand is tightly contained. In here in this little bucket is some that I picked yesterday. There you can see the powder even coming out of it. If we get really close you can see how it's opened up and released some of the spore and down inside the bucket is powder and there's powder even on my fingers right there. That's the powder that we're looking for. So this is yesterday's batch right here and it's already opened up. So my timing is good because uh, out in nature, out in the woods, I've got a feeling that all the ones that are still on the plants are, are going to open soon. Uh, as soon as I get home I'm going to transfer everything from this little pail into a, a smaller Rubbermaid container. So there's three types of lycopodium that grow in our boreal forest. This one which is the ground cedar, the stiff club moss which is the one that I typically gather, and then the ground pine which we've also seen examples of too. Now all three of them have these similar cone structures that contain the spores. The powder is actually releasing so we've had some cold temperatures and even snow lately and so I might be too late. Even though the spores are releasing out of these I'm going to still gather some of these. This is the ground cedar and I know just in the forest over here there's a bunch of the stiff club moss which is the standard lycopodium that I look for. Hopefully the spores haven't released on that and we can still gather a bunch more. Okay so here is the Rubbermaid container that I've been using for a few years now and you can just see inside there, let's see the powder back in there. I like to keep some of these bits around because when I do the demonstration for groups then I have some of these to hold up and pass it around so they can touch it and feel it and stuff. And then it's a simple matter of removing all of this and then running it through a strainer, something like that. Uh, and you can get smaller and smaller strainers until you wind up with a container full like I have right here. Now this is years of collection. Years of collection. And there you can see the lycopodium. It's coated my finger. It's silky soft and that's why in some cases it has been used for diaper rash uh, because it prevents chafing of course when you have diaper rash in babies. So we have a little container here with a few tools that I use with the lycopodium. I have a little funnel and I have this little opening door with a nice little scoop on it and as you can see it will take some pour it in and look at that it flows so nice and, and easy just like that and pours right out and we'll fill this container close that up some other interesting uses for a lycopodium uh, the powder has been used to coat pills so that pills don't stick together. Uh, it's also used to coat microscope slides so they don't stick together. Coating on condoms as well so that they're not sticky. Surgical gloves is another uh, material that often has lycopodium coating on it to keep them from sticking and to be somewhat water resistant. Uh, magicians have used it in stage tricks uh, for many years to create flashes and, and little mini explosions. Uh, lycopodium powder is also used quite extensively in cosmetics 
face powders and that sort of thing, it has a tendency to soak up the sweat. So a lot of cosmetics will have it as a small ingredient. And lycopodium, interestingly enough, was uh, used in the first internal combustion engine that was ever built. That was the source of explosion used in the engine and they quickly realized it wasn't viable. It needs to be airborne in order for it to be explosive. So to just run a lighter over it like this doesn't actually do anything. There was a bit of sizzling there, but it's not going to get the great explosion. See that? Little tiny bit burnt off and that's, that's about it. One of the best ways to demonstrate the lycopodium for group is to get a little bit of plastic tubing like this. And that's why I have this container with a small little spout on it because it's very easy to pour the powder, which flows very nicely, down into the tube like so. On this end right here, I'm just going to stick that right in my mouth and we'll give it a little pop. Well, <laughs> try it up. A little bit of light. Woo! Oh boy. Coat the water. And we'll coat that water. Ooh, I did lots there. And as you'll see, you can push your finger right down. See my finger down in there and you can pull it up and it's dry. And we'll bring the finger right up nice and close. Yeah, awesome. Dry finger. Cool. Okay, let's have some fun.